All right, in this video, we're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule, which is a very effective way of dealing with um, specific types of limits once you know how to take um, some derivatives. So the limits in particular are limits that uh, result in 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So uh, let's first write down what L'Hopital's rule is. So um, if the limit is x pro to c of f of x over g of x is equal to 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, um, so that's when you try to evaluate the limit directly at C. You plug in, you get 0 over 0, or maybe you get infinity over infinity. Um, then there's something we can do. The limit as x approaches C of f of x over g of x is actually equal to the limit as x approaches C of f prime of x over g prime of x. Um, so that's essentially what L'Hopital's rule says. There's a bunch of things that, that go with it. I mean, hopefully you're in a calculus class and uh, your teacher or someone is talking about them with you. Uh, it's possible after applying L'Hopital's rule that the limit uh, doesn't exist. It's possible you have to apply L'Hopital's rule more than once. Uh, there are some techniques you can use to create 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. Uh, but this video is just about some examples. So uh, now I'm going to show you some examples of using L'Hopital's rule. Uh, so the first one is actually a really simple limit that you would probably immediately think to do by factoring, canceling, uh, and moving on. But uh, I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. So first I try to evaluate it directly, and you can see that you get 0 over 0. So now I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. So uh, I usually make this little notation here to indicate that I'm using L'Hopital's rule. So it's still the limit as x approaches 3. Never forget to write the limit. Um, so if x is a variable, as long as you're going to be writing an x, you need to write the limit. So I need the derivative of the top function which is just 2x, divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1. Now I try to reevaluate. I get 2 times 3, which is 6. Um, the alternative method, which you probably would have used, is um, to factor, and then we cancel. So the limit is equivalent to the limit as x approaches 3 of just x plus 3, and that is also 6. Uh, so you can see it works. Let's take a look at uh, a couple more examples. So say we have the limit as x approaches 1 of the natural log of x over x squared minus 1. So this is supposing that you know uh, the derivative of natural log, which you're going to find out in a second if you don't. So uh, I try to evaluate directly. I get 0 over 0 because the natural log of 1 is 0 because e to the 0 equals 1. Um, and then 1 minus 1 is obviously 0. So I'm going to apply L'Hopital's rule. So it's still the limit as x approaches 1. Now the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x, and the derivative of x squared minus 1 is 2x. Now I try to reevaluate. So every time you use L'Hopital's rule, you immediately try to reevaluate by substituting, and I get 1 over 2, and that's the uh, limit. Let's take a look at another one. So I have the limit as x approaches 0, sine of 3x over sine of 8x. So you might have actually learned uh, prior to this how you can evaluate this, uh, all predicated on knowing that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is 1. There's all kinds of manipulations you can do here. You, you multiply by 3 over 3, 8 over 8, and x over x, and then regroup things and whatever. Um, but let's, let's see what happens if we try L'Hopital's rule. So direct substitution, the sine of 0 is 0, so we end up with the sine of 0 over the sine of 0, 0 over 0. So that's a L'Hopital situation. So it's the limit as x approaches 0. The derivative of sine of 3x is 3 cosine of 3x by the chain rule, and knowing the derivative of sine. And uh, that's going to be over the derivative of sine of 8x, which is going to be 8 cosine of 8x. Again, the chain rule and knowing the derivative of sine. Um, and now if I evaluate, the cosine of 0 is actually 1. So this is going to give me 3 a's. Um, so you can see L'Hopital's rule is really effective and pretty simple to use. Let's take a look at another example. So I have the limit as x approaches pi of 1 plus cosine of x over x minus pi quantity squared. So direct substitution, the cosine of pi is negative 1. So I get 1 minus 1, which is 0, and then pi minus pi is obviously 0. So I get 0 over 0. Uh, I'm going to use L'Hopital's. So limit as x approaches pi. Uh, the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. And then that's going to be over the derivative of this. Uh, I'm using the chain rule, basically. So it's 2, and then the quantity x minus pi, and then to the first. And then technically times the derivative of x minus pi, which is 1. Uh, try to evaluate again. The sine of pi is 0. 
So I got 0 over 0 again. So that's L'Hopital's again. So I'm going to do it again. Still the limit as x approaches pi. And the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine of x. And then in the denominator, I just get 2. And now direct substitution gives me um, 1 over 2 because the cosine of pi is negative 1. So negative negative 1 is 1 over 2. And there's your answer. I want to show you one more way in which we can use uh, L'Hopital's rule. It's kind of interesting and no one really does it. Um, say we have this limit, the limit as h approaches 0 of sine squared of pi over 6 plus h minus 1 fourth over h. So the way this problem is intended to be done is for you to look at it and recognize the definition of the derivative. Um, so there's the definition of the derivative. So what we're really looking at here is a situation where f of x is sine squared of x and a is pi over 6. So you can see that that's all that's been done because uh, sine of pi over 6 is 1 half squared, you get 1 fourth. So that's f of a in this case. Um, so in that case, f prime of x, 2 sine of x times the derivative of sine of x, which is cosine of x. So a little chain rule. And then f prime of pi over 6, hopefully you remember your unit circle. And we just get radical 3 over 2. Um, so that's the answer. But what I want to do is I want to show you how you can use L'Hopital's on this. The key thing before you use L'Hopital's on this is to realize, um, obviously if I plug in zero, uh, 0 for h, I get the, the sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half squared. I get 1 fourth minus 1 fourth in the numerator, which is 0 over 0. Um, I need to know what the variable is. So here, the variable in this whole deal is actually h, because it's the limit as h approaches 0. h is the thing that's changing, also literally the only variable that you see in this entire problem. Um, so the derivative I take will be with respect to h, which is probably something you don't do all that often. But I got 0 over 0, so I'm going to use L'Hopital's. So it's the limit as h approaches 0. So um, the derivative of sine squared of something. So the derivative of something squared is 2 times that thing, so 2 sine of that thing. Um, then uh, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine of pi over 6 plus h, and then technically times 1. The derivative of 1 fourth is 0. And then over, the derivative of h with respect to h is 1. So if you look at that, now direct substitution gives me 2 sine of pi over 6 cosine of pi over 6, which is exactly what I got before. Um, so I got radical 3 over 2. And uh, same answer either way. So that's just a bunch of examples with L'Hopital's rule, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.